Welcome to our third episode of The Campfire. Just a reminder, my name is Crystal. I'm technically a writer working on the web on the AMP project. I've got two email enthusiasts with me today, John and Patrick. Would you two please introduce yourselves? Hi, uh, my name is Patrick Kettner. I am a developer advocate at Google working on the AMP project. Hi, my name is John Barr. I'm a software engineer on Gmail working on AMP for email. Awesome, thank you both again for joining me today. Uh, as we've revealed, today's episode is gonna be talking about email and AMP. And I just have a little question for you guys to get us kicked off. And uh, that is, how many emails do you think you get every day? I think today I'm at uh, 172 since midnight. It's midday, so a slow day, you might say. Uh, that is an impossible, I think it's an impossible thing to count. I use a priority email, so some computer decides what emails to show me. Even, even with that, I don't read them all, so hundreds, hundreds and hundreds. Follow-up question, is there anything from like just an email title that makes you want to open it immediately or delete it immediately? Anytime that an email is friendly and I have no idea who it is, like it seems like spam, I just get irritated. Like when people try to act friendly in their marketing stuff, like over overly friendly, like, hey, long time since we talked. And it's like, I don't, I've never done anything with you. Just go straight in the trash. If it has a short subject and it was to a small audience that those emails I want to read first. You two get hundreds of emails every day. So that sounds like there's probably billions and billions of emails getting sent out every single day to people all over the world. And with email in general, you know, I, I, I don't think it's changed a lot since I've started to use email until, <laughs> until AMP. So emails built with AMP. How are they different from regular emails? Yeah, no, email's been the same for a really, really long time. I think the last major change outside of security stuff was like HTML emails. And that's, I believe, going over 25 years at this point. It's, it's definitely not a new thing. Um, AMP emails are a really interesting uh, continuation of that process that just sort of stagnated for 25 years. Uh, all the different parts of email, there's like a basic uh, plain text, like you might notice when you open your phone, it has like a little version or on like your, uh, if you ever have an Apple watch, there might be a little small version that shows up there that doesn't have all the same images as when you fully open it. It's because emails are built using different parts. They're called uh, mime, mime parts. It just basically an email is a container for a whole bunch of different pieces of email, types of email, so that they render differently on the same thing. The AMP emails are just an extension of that. It's a new mime part that can be added two emails, and if it's opened on a client that can uh, handle AMP emails, then it'll handle it, it'll run it, and it can uh, use a whole bunch of the exciting new technology and exciting new uh, you know, UI widgets and capabilities that uh, AMP allows for inside of the same email. I completely agree with Patrick. Uh, email has not changed in a very long time. Um, we've had, some, apart from security improvements, um, we we've been stuck with text images and some limited css style sheets for a very long time and amp for email is an attempt to make it more interactive to add um, up-to-date content um, while still um, making keeping email um, safe all right so i'm hearing this alluding to interactive and up-to-date emails. For me, an up-to-date email is usually uh, just a newer email. Uh, <laughs> so is there something special going on with AMP emails that keeps them more up-to-date? Uh, what, what does that mean? Uh, one, of the, one of the most exciting things for me, at least, uh, for AMP emails is you have the capability to uh, fetch content from a server, uh, from your, if you own a website, from your website. Uh, when the email is opened. And so like if I was an e-commerce store, for example, and I was selling people t-shirts, when they open an email, I could actually make it so that I show them if the order has been fulfilled, uh, wh where they are in a track uh, order tracking process, is the order out for delivery, was the order already delivered without having to send seven of, you know, different up-to-date emails, you can, you can actually see the most up-to-date version uh, of the status of my order when you open an AMP email, if I've built that uh, with it. it. The 
technology is there to allow for it, I guess is what I'm saying. And so it can have a really, really uh, engaging user experience. It's uh, very exciting. Absolutely. The types of email opportunities that this permits, uh, it's, it's really amazing. You can have um, new up-to-date data, um, but the value of AMP for email is not just that. On one end of the stack spectrum, we have uh, local interactivity like carousels of images um, or, or buttons. So for example, you get sent an email about a shirt. Now you can see that shirt in all the different colors. Um, uh, or you could get a receipt about a service that you just had, maybe a, a taxi or delivery food. Um, and there are, uh, there's a text box in line uh, uh, to send a review uh, or star ratings. Um, you can have uh, cart-like functionality. Um, I think the most complicated email I've seen so far is for the comment on a Google Docs document where you see the current state of the document and the current state of that comment thread. So if Patrick replies to that comment thread, you know, a minute before I open my email, um, then I'll see the latest up-to-date content and I can reply to that in line without leaving my email. Yeah, I don't know if we have any Google Doc users uh, watching this right now. I'm sure there's at least one or two, but I know that's something that internally a lot of people were very excited to start seeing in emails was this commenting function and being able to see what people are saying on Google Docs without actually having to leave your email to go look at the actual doc and being able to respond to comments right in your email. And I'm really curious, like, what is it about the introduction of AMP that has made this possible for email. Why wasn't this something we could have brought to the email platform before? So I think we have, um, we were talking about HTML email before um, and HTML, uh, as we know, permits all of these amazing web apps that we see today, including complete up-to-date documents where you're interacting with somebody else. Um, we don't permit that in email. Uh, because uh, we don't consider it to be safe. Um, we don't allow sender JavaScript or code to run um, in. Uh, and so if you're restricted to just showing something and styling that something, then there's no interactivity. There's no network requests apart from images. Um, you see something and you're stuck with that something. With AMP, um, we can permit a more interactive email experience because while we don't allow freeform code and JavaScript to run, um, we can allow you to use these components, uh, which can be more interactive, AMP form, AMP list, AMP bind, for example. Yeah, I think one thing that, like, AMP has been around for a while. Um, you know, it's, I believe, over five years by the time uh, we're recording this. And it's something where we've seen, you know, billions of users now pretty much every day interact with an AMP document. There's so many people that do that. As a result, you know, we were able to be comfortable with the scale of um, testing with it. What is it, ac it can actually be secure in production environments. And that was something I think that allowed for uh, a lot more confidence in researching uh, using AMP as a possibility for more interactive emails because we can see that it can properly be restrained and properly be uh, controlled in a secure way and not have, you know, user leaks. Awesome. Uh, thanks, both of you. That leads me into my next question, um, which whenever I talk about AMP, and I think in general everybody talks about AMP, the highlight is the components and the magic that they're they're able to do and bringing them into email sounds like what what has been able for bringing AMP components into the email platform is what's enabled all this functionality in a secure way is that these components are just so well built out and trusted and maintained and components are really what makes AMP AMP. And I think a lot of people who are really familiar with AMP use it as uh, building websites. And so if I were to now take my AMP knowledge of websites, can I directly use that to build email? So to sum up, the question is, can I use the same AMP components in email as I can on an AMP website? 
I was an email enthusiast, specifically an AMP email enthusiast, before I even joined Google. I actually tracked down Paul uh, Backhouse, who used to be the, the head of the DevRel team for AMP, to specifically say, can we get more on AMP for email before I even worked at Google? I'm very excited. Uh, so the answer is, uh, it depends, I guess, which is the most annoying type of answer. Uh, we There are a number of, compo all the components you can use in an AMP email are the same that you will get on the AMP web. Uh, they occasionally will have some larger restrictions for the same security things. Uh, the, the Gmail security team is extremely tough and extremely thorough for, for good reason. Uh, but it does mean that we want to make sure that uh, every single piece of uh, functionality that's added is secure. Uh, you know, we really don't want to end up ruining the entire platform because we were a little too excited and enabled something that accidentally leaked a whole bunch of user information. Uh, so. Uh, most of uh, everything that you can create with an AMP email, you absolutely can uh, use existing components for. Uh, there just might be a little bit uh, tweaking or an additional uh, header that might be uh, required in order to do certain network requests, for example. Uh, you can learn a lot more about it, though, on the website amp.dev, uh, where we give specific uh, AMP email documentation for any uh, all the capabilities and any nuances to it compared with the normal um, website version of AMP. I think the the most uh, the components that you might be familiar with uh, that are permitted in AMP for email uh, are AMP list and AMP form, AMP bind is a huge one, um, and then after that AMP carousel, AMP accordion, and uh, autocomplete. So a lot of really great AMP components that just like that just make it easier to build out interactive functionalities in emails and gives us this ability to then request from servers updated information and just AMP components are able to box that up in a secure way uh, that email clients are able to trust. Exactly. Um, and it's kind of like a big box of Legos is sort of how I think about it. Like there's a whole lot of pieces uh, that allow you to build really complex stuff. Uh, for example, AMP form is something that is uh, seems like it might not be super useful if you don't uh, know a ton about uh, web development already, but AMP form basically just means allow you to request any information from the server. And so we can, people have built some really, really complex, uh, incredibly engaging interactions in an AMP email just using an AMP form and the uh, server request server response. Um, there's the AMP playground, uh, it's also on AMP dev that has some more advanced versions of the uh, AMP form interactions where you'll have fully functional carts where people can add and remove um, items to their cart, you know, add a, a promo code, change a color on a shirt, all kinds of just really, really amazing interactions are capable there with those low level pieces. Awesome. Uh, well, that leads me into my next question then, which um, since we're discussing all these things about using AMP components in an email to build out these things and how simple that sounds to just take an AMP component, throw it in there, and all of a sudden I have an accordion or an image carousel or a way for my email to talk to my server. But my question is, and I think, John, uh, I, I'm asking this one to you first. Is it harder to build an AMP email than a regular email? I would say that that depends on what you're building. If what you're building is as simple as, um, as uh, modifications that take place locally, for example, a carousel, which is really just several image tags um, that you can scroll between um, with some different styling. Um, then making use of that um, is really not difficult at all. Um, copying, pasting an example. Um, um, if you're building something that is more complicated and you we have seen examples of uh, very powerful emails, like a product cart within an email, um, which requires endpoints. If you own those endpoints and you're building them yourself, it's going to be more complicated than a normal email, as you might expect. But the, the payoff might be worth it for you. So maybe it's not more, maybe it's not harder to, it's just different and it comes with a different side of abilities and functionality and it it's it's just a new layer on email yeah that's that's totally true um and additionally i don't want to make it uh sound 
like it's some unbelievable hurdle for people to to tackle here and there are tools uh being built um and that have been built um for you to help build amp for email uh where you can build quite compelling emails without actually modifying code yourself uh stripo has one um example uh, that you could go take a look at if I'm somebody who has an understanding of AMP or just an understanding of email, um, just what, what are some things that like in general I should know if I want to get started writing AMP emails and, e and sending emails in general? Is there any like, like tips and tricks that I should know right off the bat or anything I should keep in mind that you guys can, can think of? <laughs> sure. Um, so if you just want to check out what it's like to develop in a very just kind of open greenfield sort of way uh you can definitely check out i think it's playground.gmail.dev uh correct me if i'm wrong there john but uh it's a place where you can enable uh so actually one thing that's worth mentioning right now is that we're still uh on an allow list based approach for amp emails uh because like i mentioned earlier the security team for gmail is very very secure and uh as a result you, we are still um, individually allowing senders to send email. This is not something uh, that I couldn't send you or John or anyone else a AMP email today without getting actual approval from Gmail for my email address to send those things. Uh, if you go to the Gmail playground, uh, you're, you're able to send those emails for yourself, uh, to, uh, sorry, to yourself without having uh, any additional uh, signups. Uh, but once you're there, you can start developing uh, stuff today. Uh, you can start uh, messing around with it, and I'd encourage you to check out the AMP Playground uh, at playground.amp.dev to get some uh, good examples as well uh, for AMP emails and stuff that, you know, just start tweaking around with it. Um, yeah. Uh, the, the URL there was uh, amp.gmail.dev for the Gmail Playground, but I think, um, as, as Patrick was saying, the AMP developer uh, website has a lot of good information on how to get started. It has links, uh, all the links that we were talking about um, and really good examples. And I'll make sure we include a bunch of these links in the comments of this video too. Um, but if you do go to amp.dev and search around long enough, I, I know it's all there. I wrote the documentation. I promise those links are somewhere. And if you cannot find them, you can, you can email, you can email me probably a regular email because you're still finding where the AMP email stuff is. But anyways, so I, I heard you guys say like there, there is a, a sign up um, to start sending like the masses AMP email. And, I'm, and I've heard you guys kind of allude to a couple examples already, but I'm really interested in like, you know, do you, so my next question is uh, who is using AMP emails and like what sort of success are you guys seeing from them? One example is Equid, who has an abandoned cart email. Uh, so uh, for users who um, add items to their cart, who have signed up with them, but haven't uh, taken their cart to completion, they have a much more interactive abandoned cart email with AMP for email, and uh, it increased their sales uh, from those emails by 82%. Oyo, which has travel recommendations, um, has an email where you can um, see multiple recommendations, kind of carousel through them, click into one and see a full page of details for that recommendation. And they see their uh, click through rate to their website going up by 57% and their conversion rate going up by 60%. Lastly, Skipify, which has a one click shopping and email experience, their revenue fr generated from email has gone up by 37% and uh, minus 52% unsubscribe rate. Those are very impressive numbers. <laughs> yeah, I think having to get that first click through is is really hard. Your funnel drops off uh, by quite a bit. And if you can give them a richer experience without having to click, um, then that's that's amazing for um, for interactivity. That leads me pretty much directly into my next question because I that answer, John, is going to get a lot of people really excited about AMP email, for sure. And the question is, how do I get started sending AMP emails? What you do, um, you take a look at the AMP dev uh, website, um, play around, um, look at the existing examples there, um, and the ones we talked about, and think about what would work for you. Um, 
you can also take a look. Um, the supporting um, ESPs are also listed on the AMP Dev website. Um, so ensure that your ESP can support AMP email and then begin authoring it. So develop an AMP email so you and other developers in your company will be able to send yourselves AMP email and kind of allow list yourself in Gmail user settings. And then when you would like to be allow listed, there is a process for that also on the AMP website. Note that uh, AMP for email is currently supported in production by Gmail and mail.ru and is in beta for Verizon Media or Yahoo. If you're worried about uh, your email going to users that don't have the support of AMP for email, I guess one important thing to note is that email has many different MIME parts, HTML, text, and now AMP for email. It is required for you to also send in HTML or text version so that in these scenarios where AMP for email can't be displayed, it reverts back to the HTML version. Yeah, and John, is it true that after, I think it's 30 days, uh, uh, Gmail will actually only show the HTML version of an email? Is that Correct, yeah. After 30 days, it'll revert back to the HTML version or um, in certain clients or if the user is offline looking at their email. Gotcha. And that is that uh, my, the way I'd always I kind of assumed that it was because we didn't want to have to have those endpoints you mentioned earlier for interactivity, you didn't want necessarily want to require those to be up for like a decade from now, uh, or like for these email, you know, when people open their emails again later on. Um, is, is that the main reason or was there a reason beyond that? Uh, that was a very big reason. Um, uh, additionally, um, so it's, it's, it's hard to, to keep supporting all the emails that you've sent in the past and it's certainly a new, new paradigm. Um, so uh, we don't want to have senders worry about that, um, at least not yet. We could look into changing that in the future, but we have no plans to change that now. Um, um, there was a proposal put up so that that could be configurable by the sender, um, but that, uh, uh, yeah, no plans for that yet. Awesome. That makes a lot of sense. So it's this is very, very big and very, very new in the email world. So there's just a couple steps that we have to take to like, okay, for people to send these really highly interactive, personalized emails to users. And we're taking the necessary steps to have a backup or a fallback in case these emails are being sent to users who either their clients don't support it or for whatever reason, it's not rendering correctly. There's, there's a fallback method for that. Awesome. And you know, we, we alluded on this a little bit, but this does lead me into, again, the next question, um, which was asked, like, how can an individual person send AMP emails to friends? Right now, I know that isn't possible. Is it ever going to be? Is this something we're working towards or interested in? That would be an amazing uh end goal for AMP for email. Um, it is not currently in our sites. There's a lot of improvements that need to happen before we allow end users to send uh, to send emails. Um, so currently it is it is more targeted at organizations um, sending sending these emails. Um, one of the one of the main reasons are uh, tooling for the individual senders. Uh, we would need a um, some uh, email composition um, tools which support AMP um, and the um, the examples that we've seen for uh, use cases for individual users um, seem a little bit less compelling than for organizations uh, right now. So we're focusing on on them. Totally makes sense. Um... You know, one one step at a time. Email's been around for like what twenty five years, and this is the first thing that's really shaken it up. We gotta take baby steps, and that leads me into my final question for today, which is, what are you seeing senders do with AMP email? That's the most exciting, innovative, surprising thing, and is there anything you'd like to see more of? Uh, I come from an e-commerce background, so I might be biased, but all of the e-commerce examples that I see are really, really cool. Like having 
fully functional carts inside of an email is just amazing. You know, that's something that uh, there has been some, you know, bleeding edge examples that uh, really extreme email folks have done in the past using standard HTML, but it's very, very difficult to do and maintain. Uh, and AMP email makes it really uh, pretty straightforward comparatively. You know, I, I was able to put together a, a fully functional cart in an AMP email with over a uh, weekend, really. And, and that's, you know, in, in a moderate amount of time, it's really amazing how much you can unlock with a relatively small amount of stuff. You know, that sort of user experience, though, is incredibly engaging. Um, the thing I'd like to see the most would just be mostly uh, more people trying it or using it. I think there's a there's a default hesitation to where people want to only send it to only their Gmail users or only a small subset of people only for certain things. And, uh, you know, like like John mentioned before, there's already multiple mind parts in an email. So it's something where you can just send it and if they can render it, they can see it and they'll see it automatically. And the more people that start, uh, the, most, the more email companies, the more email apps that start to uh, receive that additional mind part, the more likely to start rendering that mind part for their users. And so if you find it interesting and you think it's compelling, start sending it and you're gonna see it grow all the faster. That's a great answer. You just wanna see more email. <laughs> just more. Please send me more. I'm, I want thousands a day of emails. This hundred <laughs> stuff is nonsense. For me, the one that I wasn't expecting the most was kind of applications within an email that don't even have any, um, any network functionality. Uh, for example, um, one sender, uh, find domestic, they do loans and they, they send uh, an email and include a loan calculator in that email so that the user can actually toggle like, oh, what if I'm borrowing this much? What if the interest rate is this much? Um, and seeing the effects on that and like, there's no network functionality, it's, a, it's all local and, 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 and provides a value to the user. So I thought that was um, the most uh, surprising, cool example for me. Um, and I think the examples that as a user I like the most um, are ones where you just get the most up-to-date information like um, like oh your shipping notification email um, um, what is the current status of that shipment and if I come back to the that email later I, I get the new status um, um, or or collaborative um, uh, documents, for example, seeing the most up-to-date version and being able to respond without leaving. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, I think I think that was going to be my answer, too, is just the amount of productivity increase I've seen from not having to leave the email to like just handle things. And I, I'll admit it, I the, the follow up with the carts, I, you're, they're getting my money. It's true. <laughs> Cause like I, it's it's happened before where I've been shopping online. I'm like, oh, I have a meeting coming up, and then, you know, what do we do after meetings? We check our email, and they're like, hey, this cute shirt is still here, and I'm like, yeah, that would look good on me. <laughs> All right, well, it looks like it's getting dark where you are, Patrick, because you you really yeah, went out sorry. there in the woods for. <laughs> I heard a campfire. I guess I misunderstood, but. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think we just need it. It's time to light it. Um, but, well, Patrick, John, I can't thank the two of you enough for joining me today. We've really sent it home during this discussion on AMP emails. And before I release this all back into the Webby Woods, I'd like to remind our audience to send us any questions they have about AMP or suggest future discussions they'd like to hear by dropping comments below or tweeting at us with the hashtag AMP Campfire. Thank you both again so much. Thank you.